Hello, this is Atubo and Gloria, and we are so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. And listen, it's because of the love that God has put in our heart for you. That's why we're doing this broadcast. Yeah. And, and the Holy Spirit has just been so wonderful. <laughs> it's God. He's been so wonderful. But before going to today's broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? Say this with us. Say, Father, Father I, demand I demand today and I receive, and I receive my, daily, my bread. daily bread. It's coming to me now. It's coming to me now. In Jesus', In Jesus name. name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. Oh, we were talking about something yesterday. Yeah. How to deal with, you with know, whatever challenge. whatever challenge that's going on. Instead of taking the easy way out. Now, God, we were talking yesterday about it will always be according to your choice, your decision. You will have to make that choice. And whatever choice you make. So we're talking about how to pray, you know. So like, when you make, you've made up your mind, first of all. Don't just say, the challenges are too much. I'm going. It's your choice. It's your choice. And if you choose that, you will get whatever comes with it. Yeah. But then you want to be sure that you are choosing the will of, of God, God for your life. Because it has to be what will produce life in you. Mm. Your choice has to produce life. Now, we, we talked about yesterday. Most times, people find it difficult to pray because they feel God is stereotyped. Like, God will just tell you, look, don't divorce. Don't divorce. Stay there. Now, even if God tells you that, then that's the right thing to do. Yes. Then the smartest thing for you to do is to say, okay, Lord, I'm willing to obey. Give me the wisdom on how to stay and enjoy staying. And, and be willing to to receive it. So we're looking at this James chapter 4. Chapter 3. And chapter 3. I remember saying, take it fast. Yeah. And when you go before the Lord, go for yourself. Mm. Don't take it fast and say, Lord, in three days fast, change my husband. Mm. No. The Lord, no. do this for me. This, just give the Lord a batch glad. Three days. If you don't change this man, I'm, I'm, I'm walking away. Now, people have done that. And, and on that third thought, the demand seems to be okay. Mm. He comes, oh, my wife, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I've been so wicked. Ah. He came to apologize. Mm. Ah, that means God wants me to stay. Mm. And then next few weeks later, they are suffering again. Mm. You know why? Because you didn't really deal with the issue. Yeah. It matters what you take before the Lord. Mm. So be smart. Clear your heart. Be smart. Mm. Now, he says... Verse 17. Mm. He said, but the wisdom that is from above is first, first pure. pure. Then, peaceable. Now God begins to minister to your heart. Because you've made up your mind, Lord, I'm going to do your will. But I need your help. Now he begins to bring thoughts to your mind. And then you begin to judge those thoughts. Is it pure? Does it produce peace? God's not going to tell you, this thing put poison in his food. Teach him a lesson. Stab him. Stab him. Don't cook for him anymore. He's not going to tell you those things. Now, when, when, when you are thinking or you are praying, can I be praying and those thoughts come to me? Yes. Yes. Saul, King Saul, the Bible says he was prophesying one day. <laughs> And David was sitting on the other side of the room. And this king had in his hand a javelin. And he was prophesying. From the place of prophecy, he threw a javelin at David. <laughs> How do you beat that? <laughs> He's prophesying. The Bible says he was prophesying. Now for the writer to say he was prophesying, he knows the writer must know what prophecy is. He wasn't just talking. He was prophesying. But guess what? From the place of prophecy, he threw a javelin. Now, what's going on there? That prophecy was not from the Lord. It was demonic. Yeah, the state of his heart. 
because the state of his heart was wrong. Yeah. So he was prophesying, but by a demonic spirit. And so I said, how can I be fasting and praying? Satan will come. Jesus was fasting and praying 40 days. And Satan shows up. I said, if you are the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. So he shows up. Now, if Jesus had had bitter envy in his heart, he would have done it. What kind of bitter envy in his heart? Maybe I'm praying for, maybe that was day 20 or day 30 of that fast. And he's not seen any sign from God. And he begins to think, God even answer himself. You know, that, that's how bitter strife and, and envy begins to come into your heart. After all, so so prophet, he prayed three days, three and three days, and God heard him. Man, I've been here 30 days. God have not even shown any white flag that is with me. Are you sure this thing is even worth it? Ah, Kai, man, I'm hungry. Are you sure this thing is worth it? If you are the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. Like, I need to prove that I have power. I need to prove stone. Watch it. So Saul threw that javelin because it was prophesied by the demonic spirit. So you're here praying and say, God, ah, see what my husband have done to me. And then you begin to say, teach me a lesson. Teach him a good lesson. Stab him. Don't cook his food. So he used to go outside to eat. And when the day he will need the food in here, don't give it to him. Let him see. Oh, all those thoughts begin to come to your mind. That is not the voice of God. Why? Number one, it is not pure. It is not peaceable. It is not promoting peace. So picture the scenario. I'm not going to give him food when he comes back. And then he comes back. Where is my food? Sorry. I'm sure he must have eaten from where you are coming from. What's that going to produce? Then he says, let's look at this now. We're trying to get you to understand how, how you know this is the voice of God. Now he says, it is peaceable. It is gentle. Not just speaking softly. And someone can be speaking softly, but communicating venom. <laughs> Not just speaking softly, but gentle in truth. Then he says, willing to yield. Willing to yield. You remember Hagar. We spoke about Hagar. Hagar. God said to Hagar, go, go back, back and submit. And submit. Ah! Now, because the wisdom of God will cause you to yield. He didn't say, go back and I'll make you her head. I'm sure if he had said that, ah, really? Oh, I used to think Abraham married the wrong wife. So. <laughs> Do you understand? No. The wisdom of God will demand yieldedness from you. Hey, go and make his food. Ah! Well, you know you will obey me. Whew. Okay, sir. Okay, Lord. So the wisdom, if, if God is speaking to you, there will be a part where he will need you to yield. Full of mercy. How many times have you forgiven your husband? This time around, don't forgive him. That's not the wisdom of God. Lord, you see, I've forgiven ten times. What did Jesus say about forgiveness? That's how the Lord can respond to you. you know he said, Father, look, this man, he has done this thing ten times, and I've forgiven him those ten times. And then he just said, the Lord said, eh, but Jesus said 70 times, seven times. In a day. And then you go. Because <laughs> okay. he will demand mercy from you. Now, without partiality, it's God that will make you look at that situation without partiality. You like, it's the right thing to do. It's not emotional. Yeah. It's the right thing to do. You won't think that God is suppressing you and no, this no. And, and, and you know, is it without and without hypocrisy? Don't just do it for two days and watch to see his response. Mm. This is the truth. Mm. Live in the truth. Guess what? When the wisdom of God comes, now we've just shown you how you recognize that this is God's wisdom. 
when the wisdom of God comes, and this is the wisdom of all wisdom, why would God be giving you his wisdom? This is the truth. He wants to change the situation. Now, but before he would change the situation, he has to be sure that you are fully on his side. So he begins to tell you what to do. Do this, do this, do this. And you look at it and say, Lord, because you are the one asking me to, to do, do it, I believe you. I'll do it. I'll do it. And you don't do it out of grudging. You know, you don't do it grudgingly. You, you do it in faith. And then, this is where the joy will come in. The one who loves me is showing me what to do. So then you do it with joy, not with grudgingness, well, not with any grudge in your heart. You do it with joy. Okay, this is what is going to bring a change in our situation. And then you, you begin to sing praises. Why are you sing, singing praises? Because God has spoken to you. And you begin to do it with gladness. And, and so much your husband comes and says, what's Lord, making this woman happy? happy when she's I, I left talking. this house and um, I expect her so to much be... So heat. <laughs> what's, what's making her to be happy? Now, because you're on God's side, he has taken that situation out completely of out of your hands. Mm -hmm. Now, you are functioning in what the wisdom of God said, that when a man's way pleases, pleases the Lord, the Lord mm -hmm. he, the Lord, will now cause even his enemies to be at peace with him. How much more to a man or a woman who had professed to you before that the Lord? So that the Lord begins to lead you and you're following the Lord. And suddenly your husband is looking at, ah, there's something that I've changed about my wife. Mm -hmm. This woman, no, something has changed. Mm -hmm. And he said, let me investigate. Has she met anybody? Somebody is giving her this <laughs> joy. And he keeps watching and watching. And, now, and you, they are consistent. You will be thinking, okay, I've obeyed God today. The change will happen tomorrow. tomorrow. No. Just, you know. Allow him. So your change is not today alone. That's why it says without hypocrisy. Mm. Not just two days now, three days, one week. No. This is the right thing to, to do. do. And guess what? He'll protect you. Yeah. Oh, he will protect yes. you. Yes. While you're waiting for the change to, to fully come. manifest, mm -hmm. the Lord will protect you. Yes. Even in the case of violence, yes. where, where the man is violent. See, he says, I am God. Is there anything to add? Yes. The most times, people are not willing to yield to his wisdom. Or they yield once, yield twice. And say, I've, I've, and I've tried, tried, I've tried, I've tried. No, yes, patience. it is possible that your strength fails. Mm. What do you do? Go Get back. strength from him. Go back. Say, Lord, this is what you told me to do. Mm. Don't say I'm tired, just my strength is failing. Mm. I need Help. your strength. Mm. Show me a token of your love. love. And God, even Jesus, the Bible said, an angel appeared unto him, strengthening, strengthening him. Yes. You need the strength also that, the, that angel brings. Mm -hmm. well, there are angels to strengthen us today. And that's why you keep calling on God. So, so don't complain. But turn to the Lord and say, Lord, my strength is failing. When he's feeling difficult, even when Jesus was going to the cross, he felt the weight of it. When he was praying, remember? Yeah. yeah. Say, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass. We, 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 you see, it's possible to go through those situations. They are real but this life is, situations but this is that it. bring so much pain. Nevertheless, mm -hmm. not my will. But yours. Your will be done. What does Jesus say? I receive your wisdom. I'm not going to act out my own wisdom right now. I receive you. My wisdom, if left for me, I'll just walk away from this thing. Mm -hmm. But Lord, I receive your wisdom. And then the an angel came and started ministering and strengthening him. There's that same angel is very, he's still available to strengthen you. But you've got to make up your mind just like Jesus. Nevertheless, in all these things, there is one thing I would like to do. But nevertheless, not my will, but your will. And when the Lord have opened up his will to 
that there are situations where the Lord can even tell you, leave. If that's what he tells you, know, you see situations where oh, this man, this man, this man said, leave. Ah, uh, how can I leave? If I leave now, what happened to? <laughs> exactly. Ah, now the wisdom of God has come. Now he knows why. First of all, don't put God in a box and think God will only speak this way. But open your heart to receive his word and be sincere with yourself. Mm -hmm. Listen, this one, nobody will do it for you. No prophet can do this for you because it's got to be your own decision and our time is it's up. up. <laughs> it's now, I hope this, this really is a blessing to you. Uh, whatever situation you're going through, it might be financial. Now, I, I'm trusting the Spirit of God. Next week, we'll go into different things and just see how we can be of help to you. Can we just pray and bless everyone watching? Go ahead, babe. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. We are sanctified only by your truth. Yeah. And your word is truth. Thank you for that truth that is we have ministered to your children. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, take it from us. Manifest yourself. Yes, Lord. No matter the situation, Father, manifest yourself. Yes, Lord. And help your children to hold on to truth. Yes, Lord. To stay with truth. And to begin to see results based on truth. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are praying. Amen. Amen. You know why we're praying? I heard the Lord say, someone is just thinking and saying, it's easier said than done. Mm. Listen, it is not by might. Mm. It is not by power. Mm. It is the Holy Spirit that helps. So just yield to the Holy Spirit mm. and see him help. Do you know, they need, they need me to say this. I know we are out of time. But while you were, you know, talking about this extensively before we prayed, this ministration that the Lord just gave you, that someone is saying this. You know, the Lord ministered to me while you were talking that how can I even, you know, how will I be able to do this? Is it just God just saying it and I'm just standing up and I'm doing it? Remember what we talked about? lack of understanding when you don't have understanding of the father's heart it will be difficult for you to hold on to his truth mm -hmm. so the lord just told me he reminded me of the scripture that says that i know the thoughts that the lord has concerning me they are of good, of good and not, not of, of evil, evil to give you an that expected. expected end there was an expected end yeah. for your marriage now when he's telling you do this, do this. Do that. he is you looking at that expected. expected end and then you trust his heart god will not put me at a disadvantage for me to do this thing he will not say i should love mm. when he knows that i will not have reward of love, of love yeah. so i understand his thoughts for me i know that they are good so whatever action i'm doing whatever response i am giving to that command is from that place of understanding my father's heart and then that expected yes. end will come so what is don't give up don't say oh i will not be able to do it yes. understand your father's heart he loves you you are able you can do all things yes. it is him that strengthens it is him that gives the ability on your own you cannot thank you and you will do it you are empowered to do it so just thank get up and obey and that expected end will manifest Amen. in the name of jesus praise Amen. god listen have the best weekend ever, ever. yeah we'll see you next week bye <laughs>